Alex has a very big heart and now so many times take so many times people take advantage of that big heart. And that's life, that's nature, that's what people do. I decided to do this live so that I can bring to ground what is going on in the comedy industry. There's a reason why the comedy industry is stagnant. And we are not supposed we are not where we are supposed to be. Because this is the most organized industry. 80% of comedians are educated. They went to school. So they understand, they know how things work. Yeah. So the reason I did this live and the reason I posted that I'm gonna talk about what is in between me and Mohanji is because so many of you, I'm very, very sure expected me to quarrel to have something negative to say about Mohanji that is what gains attraction in Uganda here today that is what people love people love violence they don't love peace so I used that to get you on this live and I'm sure so many people are going to leave <laughs> when I start uh, talking about what I'm going to say. If you've all noticed, Comedy Store stopped uh, being held at where its its home was, that is at Uma Showgrounds. And some of you started speculating, oh, Mohanji Awedemu, oh, Mohanji Tachaina, oh, but I want to say, for a guy who employs over 300 people every week, 300 people every week from the ushers to the security to the gate people to the tent service providers to the to the guys selling drinks to the guys selling popcorns to the comedians themselves i have benefited i have been part of comedy store i have been on that platform so many times and trust me i don't just appear on any show because i'm very expensive this one i want to tell you but Mohanji used to pay me my worth, used to pay me my money. That means I was also employed by Comedy Store at one moment in time. So for me to see this platform just stop all of a sudden breaks my heart because so many comedians out there are struggling. Yeah. So many comedians out there are struggling. And Comedy Store was a platform where they made some money 200K, 150K, 500K, 700K, 1 million, 2 million. A week, imagine you're earning that money by just going on stage to do what you love to do. And now the platform is no more. Yes, he's at Lazio, but Lazio is more of, he wants to keep the consistency. It's not money making. People like Mohanji should be national treasures. This is a guy we should just grab and put in the museum so that we can just go watch and pray to see him, to appreciate him. The Lazio show that had Bebe Cool, that's why I always respect Bebe Cool because he's a guy who speaks from the heart. He's a guy who wants to see other people succeed. He's a guy who is there for other people. No comedian has ever met Museveni. Yes, I know you will say, oh, I went to meet Museveni, but that was not even in a comedy uh, uh, level. It was not in the capacity as a comedian. He met me because of other different reasons. And nothing political, by the way. That, but that's the story for another day. No, no comedian or association has met Salim Saleh to ask for bailout. So the two years we've been under lockdown, we were under lockdown. Comedians were suffering. Our group, our WhatsApp group became a fundraiser. And now the economy opened up. Muhanji started his platform. And boom, the forces of nature started to fight against him. And the nature I talk about, URA, I talk about haters, I talk about... This is a guy who is employing over 300 people. He has gotten 300 people off the streets to give them jobs. And now all of a sudden, URA is oh, wanting to milk a platform like that. Let me explain to you how expensive holding a comedy show is. Let me just break it down for you. If you don't have... 20 million Ugandan shillings to put up a quality comedy show. If you don't have 20 million shillings, you can never, never hold a comedy show. 
Mohanji used to spend over 20 million shillings to put up that show. It could even reach as close as 50. To make sure, one, Ugandans are entertained, two, they are employed. Such a person, a local investor, a homeboy, putting up such a platform where fellow Ugandans are going to benefit is where all of a sudden the government wants to come and milk. Come on, man. It hurts me. It, it pains me. It pains me a lot. This boy has done so much for the comedy industry. He should be even given a tax haven because he's gotten so many people off the streets, including me. I'm not doing badly. I'm doing very well. I do my shows. Very few in Uganda. Most of my shows are abroad. That's where I get my money. That's why I don't have a show every week or every month in Uganda. I cannot put up a platform where other Ugandans are going to benefit. And the one guy who has done that, and doesn't just employ comedians. He employs musicians as well. Actually, musicians have benefited the most from comedy stuff than comedians. I would expect musicians to come out and, you know, make noise about it. But, pff, well... If it's not theirs, it's not their business. The most selfish industry is the music industry. Most selfish. Every musician in Uganda has stepped on comedy store. How many comedians can we talk about that have stepped on musicians' platforms? Very few. We employ musicians. Musicians should have, actually, that's why I give my flowers, I give credit to Bebe Cool. The only musician who has ever come out to talk about the plight of comedians, to talk about the comedy industry. We have an association. It is very organized. It is well led by one of the most competent leaders we have, that is Bujingo Huntington of Fun Factory. We've never written to government. We have never come out to cry in public that we need help. We've never. But we do need help. Without comedy, this country with all the problems with the poor governance this one i say without fear of favor most of you say oh well bakugura or you are government no government is terrible few people are doing their work most people are eating with the poor governance the only thing we are left to do is just to laugh about the problems we have and who can better put up laughter than comedians but nobody recognizes us i'm not complaining about that we will, all, we will always do our work. But the musicians who have a platform, they have met the president, there's now the Uganda Musicians Federation, something, something. Nobody talks about comedians. Yesterday, King Saha had a show. Sold out. Beautiful. Who are the MCs? Comedians. They will never cry for us. They will never see our plight. They are always meeting, having their associations and everything. I am very hurt that Comedy Store is no longer providing the services it was providing. Not because Muhanji has failed, but because of forces around us. This is a message to URA. This is a guy you should be actually thanking for giving opportunity to many Ugandans to earn a living. And when many Ugandans are employed, you get more taxes. But now, it's just very, <clears throat> very painful. I am very disappointed, and I want to pray for my brother Mohanji. I know it's tough. I have tried to do comedy shows every week in Uganda. It has not worked for me because of inconsistencies. One day I'm around, another day I'm not. I travel a lot. Tonight I'm going to be in Kenya. I have a show tomorrow. On Friday I'll be in Dar es Salaam. On Sunday I'll be in Kigali. So imagine I had a weekly show. It would not be consistent. But Mohanji has been very consistent. He has believed in his platform. He has grown his platform. It has become a life changer for so many people. Let me break down how many people get employed. Uma Showgrounds, 
high as that place between five to ten million Ugandan shillings for every week that Muhanji does a show. The tent costs about twelve, between eight and twelve million. The tent that you people sit in and enjoy the comedy. The tables, chairs, decoration will cost another five because of the numbers. The stage alone will cost between seven and ten million or even more, including the screens. The barricades, each barricade is 10,000. Muhanji needs about 400 barricades. That's 4 million Ugandan shillings. On barricades, now he has staff. We are looking in the, in the, we have not even completed anything. We are in the range of like 25 million. The musician, no musician. That is how selfish these people are. Every musician who wants to come, however much they have a platform, no musician can hold a show every week. That one I can tell you for a fact. But Muhanji gives them a platform and they charge exorbitant fees. A musician on comedy store is paid between 6 and 10 million. These artists you see every day, they on stage every day. Yes, they deserve the money. But not for a local investor. You understand? So this man spends a lot of money to invest in other people. And then, instead of giving him his flowers, instead of giving him his credit, oh, we come and, hey, tax. And it's not normal tax. Do you know being taxed every ticket of every person who enters? It's very sad. It's very sad. We have something going on. Honestly, every time I travel and they talk about Comedy Store, I'm very proud. Because we have something that people talk about, people think about. To you, Mr. Eddie Kenzo. Yes, the president of the Federation. I know this may not make any sense right now. But in the near future, Comedy is going to be something to be reckoned in this country. We're still getting there. When you have an opportunity, mention a word or two. The Federation is employed. All the artists under the Federation have stepped on Comedy Store stage. Or even other platforms. Eddie Kenzo, talk, when you meet these guys, mention, just mention, don't even dwell on it just mention hey by the way we have an industry which is doing very well but the guys are struggling i have never been depressed in my life like how i was during the lockdown not that i was doing badly financial i was okay i was working on radio but our group our comedy group on whatsapp turned into a fundraiser people didn't have food didn't have rent couldn't survive. We were always contributing. But no comedian has come out to start abusing government to say this, 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 this. No, because we know what we are supposed to do. But that doesn't mean we are not suffering. We need the government to come through and help us. So, this live is dedicated to Mr. Alex Mohanji. Alex Mohanji is a very personal friend of mine. Forget what you've been hearing in the media. All that was hogwash. All that was created by the media. There's a recent interview I did about how music has infiltrated the comedy industry. And they played it against us, trying to create a rift again. But we were smart this time. We sorted it out. I called Muhanja and I told him, now look at these guys. And then I sent, them, I sent him the actual interview. So many forces are fighting comedy. And it's so painful. Just like Baby Cool reiterated, I want to say it one more time. Mr. President of the Republic of Uganda, Yori Kaguta Museven. Comedians have saved so many lives, especially during the lockdown. We are people they look at they look up to, to create joy, despite 
the poor government, of your government. People have tried to come in to help in one minute, one other, da da da. But it's not enough. We need to be recognized and we need to be protected. Foreign investors come to Uganda, they are given tax holidays. Why not a local investor who's employing over 300 people, whether direct or indirectly? I am not going to stop fighting until Comedy Store comes back. Because in the, it's so painful, you know, guys looking for jobs. Hey, guys, if you have a gig and you need the comedians, I'm available. Back in the day, nobody used to talk about that because they knew every week they would expect a call from Mohanj. So what are we supposed to do? First of all, it's very expensive organizing a show on your own. No comedian is going to come up one day and just organize a show. It takes time, it takes patience, and it takes a lot of money. If you don't have it, you can't do a show. My plight is to the government. My plight is to whatever authority that is out there. Please look at our plight and try to assist us where need be. Eddie Kenzo, the president of the Federation, Cindy, the president of UMA, talk about the plight of comedians whenever you meet these influential people. Don't be selfish. Oh. Don't be selfish. At least every artist performs, used to perform on Comedy Store for not less than 10 times in a year. Imagine 10 times 6 million. That is 60 million from a comedy platform. How can you let that just slide and you don't talk about it when you get the opportunity to? We don't have the opportunity to meet the president because nobody's there to fight for us. Everybody wants to associate with musicians because, yes, they have the numbers, they have the influence, and everything is political. There is nothing about the welfare of, of musicians that these federations, these associations are for. It's all about political gain. Whoever is going to benefit from their federation is the one going to provide support. They have not yet seen comedians. But the day we wake up and we start talking the truth, Minus the drones. <laughs> you have to a drone, you have <laughs> You people see me here and you say, Oh, you are team MK, you are team 7 I fear a drone. Mm. If you want to find out the truth about how I went there, it eventually will come out when I know I am drone safe. So, guys, this message goes out to Mr. Mohanji, Alex. Be strong. Stay firm. We are with you. We are praying with you. We are going to fight for you. Because Comedy Store is a brand. It's a huge platform that has saved so many Ugandans. Alex, I give you my flowers. I respect you. I love you. You are not the godfather of my daughter for a reason. It's because of your heart. It's because of your heart. I'm praying for you. It will be well. For as long as I have life, we're going to fight until this platform comes back. Until we continue helping Ugandans, helping comedians in general to earn an honest living. Mohanji, I love you, my brother. I'm praying for you. And I want to make sure with all the cells in my body that I will be a voice, an advocate for comedy in this country. People have been fighting you. The same people who are fighting you are now creating another platform where they're going to benefit. It's very wrong. And to comedians out there, there is no beef in our industry. You create beef, we shall have a war. Don't, so many people set up platforms to compete with comedy store. Do not set platforms to compete. Set platforms to grow each other. I used to do my shows on Wednesdays. Mohanji was on Thursdays. 
But when I stopped and Magic chose Wednesdays, there's no way I'll continue doing my show on a Wednesday. I'll have to look for another day. Yeah. I, I, I'm praying for you, my brother, and I, I wish you all well. Just know I got your back all day, every day. Baby Cool, thank you for standing with us. The only artist who has stood with comedians. And not for monetary gains. He has been very genuine in his support towards comedians, towards our association. Baby Cool is the one artist who has attended all my Africa Laughs shows from the inception. He's performed on Africa Laughs over four times for free and I've not paid him. Not all, com not all musicians are selfish. No, no, no. The industry is selfish, but there are some individuals. Eddie Kenzo, Waiki Bender, Fik Famaker. Levixo, I give you my flowers. You know what it means when people are trying out something. Your support means too much for us. So I just want to say as I sign out, bro, Alex, I got you. Bebe Cool, got you. And I'm sure so many Ugandans out there got you. We're going to pray for the best. And we wish everything goes well. I say this for God and my country. I want to wish you the best of the festive season. Merry Christmas. And I wish you a beautiful and prosperous 2024. Much love for me and my family. God bless.